Okay, now I've, I've got all the effects I think I want. It's time to kind of test it on different backgrounds because just like a logo design, vectors are free floating. So I'm gonna duplicate that gray background and then I'm gonna fill it with white. Got 100% edit fill, 100% normal. See how it looks there? I think that reads okay. I lose a lot of the blue. And I, I know why that is. That's because the blues are set to be screened instead of normal. So let me, this is why you check it on different backgrounds. So let me go to my blue shapes with the effects, go to outer glow and change it from screen mode to normal mode. Why did it go red? There we go. And because it's not screened anymore, I just have to take the opacity down a little bit. And then same thing for the other one. I'll adjust it by hand instead of duplicating it. Where is it? Now, if you have trouble finding something, you can use the Move tool and you can click where it says Auto Select and then just click on it and it will take you to that layer and select it. I usually have it turned off because it can accidentally select layers you don't want to select sometimes, but in this case, it's very helpful. Let's change that to normal mode. And that one didn't go red, but I can take its opacity down a little bit. There we go. Because you want it to to be something that you like how it looks, no what no matter what the background is. And if it looks good on white and on gray, I'll select there. Okay, if it looks good on white and on gray and on black, then you've got a really versatile design. So I'm gonna duplicate and fill a third layer with black. This is all just to, to really get the, the best quality to your work. And then you get a real sense of it. The black is making me question that orange glow being so strong. So I can go to the outer glow with the gradient and I can decide, okay, I wanna shift this back a bit. And then I want that, let's see, be a little less strong, less opaque. I'll do it for the other one as well. to get spread down. Yeah. One of my favorite things about digital art is how you can always see the different options and decide what's best. Okay, I'm hearing that my mic is muffled. I'm going to plug in my external mic. And then just little fine tuning. These are really catching the, um, the eye. You know, they're really strong focal points on the black. So 
I think I'm going to dim them a little bit. Use auto select and just take that whole layer and take its opacity down a tiny bit. That one a little less so. And then just a, a quick little digital art trick. If I duplicate that highlight and I move it on top of the eye, let me control T and shrink it a little bit. And I change its blending mode. So let's try overlay. And if I take all of its effects and dim them and change, let's see, maybe to let's try normal. Pin light's good. Then I can add a little highlight to the eye to the easel. It's a very subtle change, right? But I get a little bit of that reflected light then in the eyes. I'll take its opacity down even more. It's only at 28%. And then I can duplicate it and then move it over to the other eye. So the eyes just have a little bit more circular complexity to them. And you can layer them up at such low opacities. It's very subtle. OK. So once your emoji is all finished, you're going to turn off your backgrounds. So you have just the checkerboard behind. And then, so it's free floating. Then I want you to go to image, image size, and change it from whatever inches you have at whatever resolution to 10 inches by whatever. Mine's a square, so it's 10 by 10. And I want you to change it to 300. We're going to make this full print resolution. 300 with DPI but it's really pixels per inch. So we're gonna resample. So this is making it way bigger at full print quality, 300 pixels per inch at 10 by 10 inches. But because they're all vector shapes, it shouldn't soften anything. So everything got a whole lot larger. You can see everything's there. Move that down below the eyebrows. And move this one down below the eyebrows. 
There we go. Now the one thing that does change are some of the the size issues, right? Like around the mouth. This is where layer effects can change as you change pixel sizes. So I'm going to now get to adjust all of these for the resolution that I want and my different glow sizes, <laughs> which I use quite a bit of on all these textures, right? So wherever you have size, that's something that gets revisited. It's all ways to kind of perfect what you're doing. But you'll see that just the gradations and the fills all stay the same. And everything's nice and clean for print. So instead of doing that all right now, know that you have the potential for that within your vectors. And I want you to see that when you grow something, everything comes cleanly through. So I'm going to move before in my history to before I did that image size. So though the edges aren't as clean because it's smaller, it works well for screen resolution. And I'm going to turn off my backgrounds and I'm going to save this. I'm going to export it as a PNG. So it's a free floating icon. And that's what I can put up to the assignment page. And so I do that by putting my name in and we can do this now with whatever you have because we can always up and then use the upload image tool. And my PNG is right there. And I submit it. And I don't even need to resize it because this is already kind of a, this is actually um, standard emoji, emoji size around six inches by 72 pixels per inch because that's about as large as you ever need to see an emoji. But because it's a vector, it has the potential to be much larger, which is fantastic. Okay. And then you guys are following the directions well. I should put the name of the, the book as well that this is an emoji for. All right.